We named them crystal critters because when they grow, they kind of have this eerie motion that looks like they're alive. So we have the jellyfish, which has a lot of little tendrils. We have a crab, which is kind of like a tilted guy where he has like claws up in the front. Um, an elephant, which was actually a very large drop <laughs> that we did, um, where it kind of broke, it collapsed, and then it reformed, and then it broke, and it reformed, and the resulting structure kind of looked like it had a trunk and like ears, um, like an elephant. And then my personal favorite is the droid, <laughs> which I wasn't sure what to name it, uh, but it kind of reminded me of something out of Star Wars, so we went with the droid. The first step is creating the superhydrophobic surfaces. So to do that, we take a silicon wafer, we go to a clean room, apply the nanotexture, and then add a hydrophobic coating, and that's what creates a super hydrophobic surface. So incredibly water repellent, um, and it's textured on the nanoscale, which is important because crystals don't form in this nanotexture. So then we take that super hydrophobic surface, we put it on a hot plate, um, and then we simply deposit a five microliter drop of salt water on it and just let it grow. By the time they're evaporated, they're I'm trying to think of like, I guess the size of a pin, a little bit smaller than the size of a pin. The bulk side, not like the pointy side. <laughs> <laughs> In the first stage of evaporation, you see that there are crystals that form at the air-water interface. And crystals like to form at the air-water interface. And that's partially because as the drop evaporates, water is going from the liquid to the vapor phase but the salt inside of the water can't follow it, and so it has to crystallize. And then at some point, because it's on a super hydrophobic surface, the water doesn't want to touch the surface anymore. So it de-wets from the surface, and now it's just wetting those newly formed sodium chloride crystals. Um, and at that point, now you have just a few contact points between the crystals and the substrate. And it's from those points that the legs start to form. Um, and that's because there is an evaporative growth at the surface. So there's a lot of evaporation there because it's very hot, and so the flow kind of moves downwards, and as it goes downwards, it creates these legs that grow. Yeah, we did modeling. So what we did is we looked at a uh, mass balance of the water, where we modeled that all of the liquid is evaporating through the legs at the surface, um, and then we compared that to a mass balance of the crystallizing salt, where because the initial concentration of the sodium chloride is at the saturation concentration, uh, the more water you evaporate, the more crystal growth you have. Uh, so you're able to take those two models and then solve for the rates of growth of the legs with time as a function of temperature, the evaporative flux. And the model actually worked almost surprisingly well yeah. for the data, uh, which almost never happens, so that was <laughs> exciting. <laughs> How do you then get the specific crystal critters? So if you said that they are reproducible, yeah. <laughs> like how do you decide I want a droid versus a crab? <laughs> okay, so that part you have a little bit less control over. Um, if you grew a droid in one part of the drop, or one part of the surface previously, you can put another drop in that same location, um, and you might get something that looks similar. The crabs are actually a little bit easier, because if you accidentally place your drop too close to the edge of the surface, the drop will kind of roll off and form like these curved legs. But for the most part, it's kind of just luck of the draw. Yeah. yeah, you can also play a little bit with a uh, temperature gradient on the surface because the legs grow faster on hotter parts. So if you have a hot to cold temperature gradient, you'll have something that's going to look crooked. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fairly reproducible as well. It was really exciting the first time I saw it. <laughs> we weren't expecting that. You know, it was a cool phenomenon. And actually, when I was taking the videos, I didn't realize that we have a camera kind of like that and the sound was on. And you can hear me in the background going like, this is awesome, come look at this. <laughs> so yeah, it was a cool phenomena, and I don't think we've seen anything like it before. Yeah, yeah it's largely an accidental discovery yes. <laughs> related to other research we were doing, but it's a very cool phenomenon, so it made us want to study it further.